Welcome back to the next presentation here on our investment day. I'm joined here on stage by Joachim Salmanson, CEO of Crunchfish, which, uh, who will give you the next presentation. So Joachim, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Alf. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, great to be talking about Crunchfish again. Uh, Crunchfish is a tech company um, solving for the big problems of humanity, I would say. And one of the problems we are very much focused on right now is what I will start with, and that is to try to take away the dependency that we have had for a few years on that we always have to be online. Uh, we have to have connection in order to pay digitally because everything is moving to digital payments nowadays, but we have a dependency left to solve, and, and we are addressing that with something we call digital cash. So I'll, I'll start there. I'll then expand out to talk about Crunchfish, how we are solving for the future, because we are not just, uh, we've been around for uh, about 10 years, and uh, we have, we're almost like five startups in one, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to give that picture, because it's not always easy to understand what sort of Crunchfish is doing. And then we'll come to the last question then. Uh, cash is king. When will we ever make money? Because I think that is probably the, the, the question we get most often from investors. So sort of when, when, when will you revenize? When will you monetize uh, everything you've been doing? And uh, I'll, I'll end the presentation in, in that mode. But let's start. Um, this is an article that we had in uh, Dagens Industri, the financial sort of paper of Sweden on the theme of cash is dead, long live cash. And what we mean with that is that cash is quickly disappearing uh, in Sweden. And it's very sad because cash is by far the best mean of payment. Everybody can use it. Uh, it works all the time. You never have to be dependent on any online issues. And it preserves your personal integrity. The bank does not have to know what you're up to. They do not, not have to know every, every single transaction that you make. Cash provides that. But in a, in a few years, the deputy director of uh, the Swedish Central Bank said that in 2023, which is really just around the corner, cash might be all gone in Sweden. And then I am sure that we will miss what cash stood for, the features of cash. Although that we all are starting to pay with Swiss here in Sweden or we're using cards, because in a physical form, cash is almost dead in Sweden. Only 9% of transactions in store currently in Sweden are made by cash, and it is disappearing. But a new form of cash needs to come about, and that's digital cash. And that is what we have a solution for in Crunchfish. We've solved that problem for digital cash. And it's a key issue for all central banks in the world. There, I, I just heard from the Swedish central bank that 80% of the world's central banks are looking at now introducing digital cash because they know that they need to do that. Because otherwise, the whole basis of their own national currency will, might start sort of disappearing. It will be uh, Facebook, Libra, or it will be other initiatives will come about, and they need something to protect their position. But what's good with our solution is that it's not just for the use of what's called CDBC, Central Bank Digital Currency. It's also for allowing private money, private money that sort of is in banks, to also be replicating what cash is. So we can integrate with any sort of mobile wallet, but we can also link it to the payment rails. And the payment rails, that's what the mobile wallets are using. You can, you can look at the card infrastructure. That's sort of uh, probably the oldest and most uh, well-known payment rail in the world. Uh, so if we can integrate with the core of the card rail, then all payment networks using the card infrastructure, we could per se be sort of already uh, be able to offer our solution there. Same for instant payment. In India, they have something called UPI, Unified Payment Interface. That's being used by over 100 apps in India. It's one rail and all apps are using that same sort of rail. So what, what, what we're looking for here with Crunchfish is that we're trying to get our digital cash solution as an integral part for mobile wallets, but 
what we are really hoping for is to get us integrated in the payment rail itself because that provides enormous scalability for us to offer our digital cash to any wallet using that, uh, that environment. So let, let me now sort of scale out a little bit. Um, we will reorganize our website. We really have to because it's, it's really confusing for anyone to understand what uh, Crunchfish is sort of uh, doing. Uh, we, we need to... Uh, is, is something happening here? No? Uh, we <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Crunchfish, we've been around for about 10 years, and we've come with a lot of great technology through the years. Uh, digital cash to the left here, uh, that's what we are currently mostly focused on, and we, we, we think that's a great future for us. But there, there has been some other plays as well. Before digital cash, we were focused on something we call blip it. I would say it's not as big of a problem, because now we're talking about the convenience things. We were trying to solve how can you make it convenient to pay uh, with mobile apps in store. It used to be quite cumbersome, standing there, you know, here in Sweden with Swish, one, two, three, and you should enter all these things. So we tried to make it much more fluent. Um, we also allowed sort of the cash registers uh, the merchants with the cash register to identify the customers far earlier than the payment phase itself so they can pro potentially give better service and uh, upsell some uh, goods and services to you. A new area that we patented last year is how to reduce food waste. That is also one of the big problems of humanity today. It never used to be this way, that we threw away so enormous amounts of food. So the United Nations, as part of their sustainability goals, the 19 sustainability goals, have identified reducing food waste as one of the goals. That should be halved to 2030. So how do you do that? How do you half something in the entire chain here, from producers to the merchants to the consumers? How do we throw away less food? Well, one idea that we patented was that we could engage the customers by giving them a discount for not choosing the milk carton, for instance, that has the latest expiry date. Uh, if we could take the one which have a closer expiry date, if the whole industry would give you an incentive, uh, say you, you get a 30, 40, 50 percent discount by taking another milk carton. Maybe you would think twice before you reach sort of to the back here to get that latest milk carton because there is an incentive there. If we can engage the whole mass of consumers by giving them incentives, we think this is a great way forward. And we've come up with a way to, to, pat, uh, to we, we patented it and we come up with a way that is going to utilize a new things that will come out in the market. Because today you, will, you, you notice that every single product you buy has a barcode that describes what is that article you're buying. But in the future, in the very near future, the standards is being set, it's called GS1 Digital Link, there will be a QR code instead. And there you can code in not just what the article is itself, but also things like uh, the expiry date, batch numbers, and so on. And then we have a machine-readable code which could provide you with a discount if you are choosing, for instance, the milk carton, which has a, a kind of short expiry date. It's really a, an interesting problem, and be one of the big ones. Even the UN has put it on their uh, top 19 list. We have nearby. This is something we worked on a lot uh, a few years back. And the problem we're solving here is that how may I connect and communicate to everybody who's around me and also things around me? How can we make that communication channel open and easily available to you? And we have some great patents in this area. I think we have 12 innovations. 11 of them are already granted. We, we don't have the bandwidth right now to work on this area, but it's a great patent portfolio. Maybe we will divest it. I don't know, but I believe social media companies, this could be uh, uh, dating companies, uh, networking companies, gaming companies, uh, they would probably infringe on our patents quite soon if they, already, if they haven't already done so. And we might sort of 
uh, pursue a little bit of a patent strategy here, alternatively to sell it off to some big player in this area. The original area of Crunchfish is gesture control. We started with gesture control um, already back in 2011. And uh, this is the time I got into the company. I, I was the chairman, and, and this was sort of uh, the only thing that the company sort of did or focused on in 2011, uh, gesture control. We have taken this through many generations, uh, but currently our focus is something on something that is also a big problem of humanity, which is also something that must be a limited time. Just like, why are we dependent on online for making payments? That must be a limited time. It's always been local transactions. Just like for gestures, why does everybody walk like this, you know, with their neck bent looking at mobile phones? That must be a very, very limited time in human history. And what will happen is that, instead, the central device of humans will not be the mobile phone in the future. It will be AR glasses. Everything you see on the screen, you will see in front of your face instead. And we have solved the problem of how to uh, control that device. You don't have any screen, so there's no touch you, you, can, you can work on, on on your glasses. So you need your hands. And this is an extremely hard problem to solve because we cannot train a mass market. It just has to be so intuitive so it works out of the box. We uh, have to anticipate all sort of scenarios. It's not just some specific, say, industrial scenarios. Um, we have to work with real estate uh, sensors that are so small, so your glasses will look good. Industrial IR, they put on something on you, and you're paid to wear it, uh, looking maybe like some, someone straight out of Robocop. That won't work for consumers. They will never take that. And, and uh, the other thing is also the proce processors are extremely sort of uh, sparse. We don't have much processing powers uh, for gesture control. But we've solved all that. The beauty with countries in this area is um, I, I like to you know, quote Sklatan. What people could do with a soccer ball, we can do with an orange. That's our strength here. We can really deliver something in this area with you know, almost do magic with sort of no means at all, or just an orange at least. So, cash is king. When will this company, with this, all this fantastic patented tech, highly scalable solutions, when will we ever make money? Uh, you know, I know how many times I've got that question. And it, it is a good question, and, and, and quite rightfully so. Uh, because cash is king, and, and we can't just continue just, uh, you know, funding it with our own, own uh, sort of stuff. But, but we, we are investing in our tech because we believe the future will come. Uh, it will, it, it's sort of difficult to say exactly, it's like the consumer AR. We need one of the big ones, Apple, Facebook, Google, to come out with these consumer ARs. Then we're there to deliver this sort of gesture control. But there are things now on the horizon which makes this probably a little bit closer than, uh, uh, than they have ever been before. I would say the hottest area is digital cash. This is sort of, you know, digital payments, there is no bigger system in the world than the world's digital payments. You, you, that's basically digital payments for goods and service everywhere. Uh, and, and particularly in store. In store still dominates, even if uh, e-commerce has uh, gone up a lot now in the pandemic days. But e Digital payments in store is a huge machine all over the world. We've come up with something new, which we believe will be the standard way of paying. If you have enough money on your phone, you will use that because you are completely independent from anything that could go wrong on online issues, and you will just settle it immediately. Why go online when you sort of can have the money on your phone? Only if you need to, if you need more money, then you can go online. And we have solved that problem in a really clever and nifty way, and we are in the, in the process of the here doing proof of concept and, and pilots with it. Blipit is coming to market. We are rolling it out that very, very soon. Uh, we had a bad year this year because some of the cash regs we were integrated with, they, um, yeah, they were hit by uh, the pandemic. We had one, uh, they were in, in, in events, and obviously there were no events this year, so that was difficult. We moved it over now to uh, having 
us integrated in uh, fast moving consumer goods, uh, grocery stores, because we're still buying food quite a lot because we're not really going to restaurants anymore. So th this is where we will see revenue already Q1. Uh, food waste uh, is interesting. I think next year will be a trial year with it, but we have Clearon as a partner and they are, as you know, the biggest coupon uh, clearinghouse in, in the country. Nearby are touched, and that's not where we're going to get it from. And then there is gesture. Uh, again, we, we are looking, uh, qu following that area quite keenly. We're looking for what's going to happen for consumer glasses. And we still have business from uh, mobile phones and even uh, digital screens, because in the pandemic areas, you really don't want to touch any screen, really, unless it's your own screen. So in summary, please be patient with Crunchfish. We do have some extraordinary tech. Uh, and we believe it will pay off greatly to uh, follow us because uh, one day uh, you will you read the news that we have made a breakthrough and uh, you really don't want to miss that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joachim. It's always fun to, uh, to listen to you. And there's a lot of energy in your, uh, in your uh, uh, communication. Um, a question. Um, you, you talk a lot about digital cash, and I can see some of the, the motivations. One of them is that uh, you can overcome uh, uh, connectivity issues. Um, I'm thinking, well, here in our part of the world, we are pretty much online all the time. Uh, you're looking at India, where I understand that it's more of a problem. Uh, how big of a problem is it that people don't have connectivity when they want to make a payment? In India or here? Yeah, yeah. in India. In India. Um, in, in India right now, uh, yeah, there is definitely a connectivity problem, even in the big cities, but certainly out in the countryside. But the biggest problem right now, because uh, mobile payments is booming. Uh, they did two billion transactions uh, on the UPI rail alone in October. And what's the problem is, is that the bank servers, they are being weighted down and they can't respond in time. There is a time limit of 20 seconds. And if you don't respond in 20 seconds, you have to decline the payment. Even if you have connectivity, even if you have money on your, your phone, you're standing there waiting, waiting, and it says decline because it times out. And this is a huge problem uh, which the banks has to solve. And with our digital cash solution, we would have all the mobile phones in the whole country basically as a queuing system. You queue the transactions in the, uh, the phones. You make the transactions in the time-critical moment when you pay, you do that instantly. That's done. Mm. Then in a second step, we send up those, those transactions. Mm. So we're basically solving for that problem. So right now, it's not the connectivity in India. It is simply that the, the bank servers are on their knees of the sheer volume happening in India at the moment. Mm -hmm. You're operating in a very hot area. FinTech has been hot for years, and it's uh, at least as hot as it used to be. Um, and there are a lot of players, and you, you can read about uh, lots of different initiatives from, from China as well. So do you see Chinese companies as competition when you are addressing Asian markets like India, for instance? No. Uh, well, well uh, China is sort of a, it, China is certainly, they are the most advanced mobile payments market in the world. They, they've, they've done it longer than we have. They don't mm. use car that much, but they have two monoliths. It's sort of Tencent and Alipay, and mm. everybody sort of WeChat and uh, Alipay, everybody's using that. Mm. But right now they are uh, sort of, uh, there are problems between India and China. I don't know if you read that in the news. Mm. So India is not too keen on uh, Chinese investors or because it's almost uh, it's not it's a cold war between the countries, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we I don't think it's an advantage to come to China I would come to India and say that you would like to uh, offer services if you're a Chinese company. I think uh, they will work against that right now simply because of geopolitical uh, situation at the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, turning to Sweden, uh, you mentioned Blippet. Uh, I know you, you have a production order for 500 Blippet terminals, uh, which I expect will be rolled out during the course of 2021. So if you were to dream about how many Blippet points there will be in Sweden uh, if we stand here in a year from now, uh, do you have an, any estimates on that? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we do have an estimate. It, it's sort of, it's at least 10 times as much as that. Mm. Uh, the 500, that, that was what we had already bought electronics and the manufacturer here in Malmö wanted to please uh, sort of, you have to place the order or buy the electronics, so we just placed it. But, but there mm. is sort of right now in the Q1 already sort of 
uh, rollout plan for for uh, for the, those terminals. But I think uh, for for the year, I think we are looking at. I think the plan is 6,000 units. But uh, mm. it's it's always hard when you start from zero to know what it will be. But we we, we think it will be uh, not just 500 in the thousands, sort of, uh, and probably maybe up to 10,000. So if yeah. I'm in luck, uh, my closest store will be t will be taking uh, Blippet payments uh, this time next year. Yes. That might be possible. Yes. <laughs> Let's sure. hope for that. Okay, thanks very much, Joachim. Thank you very much. Uh, and after a very short break, we will uh, be ready for the next company, and that's Helios Spectra and their CEO, Ali Ahmedian. So we'll be back in a minute.